In this video, we would be looking at the finals happened in the Champions Chess 2 between none other than Alreza Firuja vs Magnus Carlsen. And the twist here is Alreza has to beat Magnus two times in order to win Champion Chess 2. Uh, so a good part here is for all the Alreza fans that Alreza actually been able to beat Magnus in the first bracket and now the scores have been reset. So the first two games ended in a draw and now we have an Armageddon. So basically the tie breaks where Magnus is playing with the black pieces and Alreza is playing with the white pieces. There is no increment. Alreza is having 10 minutes. Magnus is having 7 and a half minutes. And uh, yeah, if it's a draw, Magnus will win. So yeah, the game is going to be very interesting. So I don't want to waste any further time. So let's start. So Alreza with the white pieces starts the game with 1 e4. e5, bishop to c4, already the bishop's opening. Knight to f6 and not d3. If you try to play knight f3, it only transposes into the standard, the two knight defense, where you can play knight g5 or you can even go for simply short castle or d3. But okay, we have d3, c6, the idea is to play d5, knight to f3, d5, bishop to b3. So it's just keeping the pawn tension because if you try to capture the pawn, now you are not having the center pawn whereas black is having full control of the center. So that's the whole idea of not capturing the pawn and first going back with the bishop. Bishop to d6 and now we have the move knight b to d2. I personally feel short castle is a much more flexible move because like it's, it's the thing that you have to do now or maybe later but committing the knight to d2 would be I guess a slight inaccuracy. Short castle, short castle, rook to e8, rook e1, knight to d7, c3. Because after knight d7, black's idea is to play knight c5 and just get rid of the bishop. So c3, knight c5 is just making the room for the bishop to go back on c2. Takes, takes, bishop to c7, queen to e2. Just keeping flexibility with the queen. The idea could be to put the rook on d1, attacking the queen. So now queen to e7. And now b4 by Alreza. Already many options are available for white in this position. Knight f1, knight g3 maybe. And definitely b4. And that's exactly happened in the game. And now knight to c4. The idea is to put the knight on e3 via f1 or to c4. But c4 is a square that actually covers the center as well. So compared to f1, c4 is a much better square. So now we have knight to f4 by black. Already it's a bit hard to find a plan for black but the best would have been to play a5. Just simply try to punish white for its overextended structure on the queen side via a5. And the line continued would have been takes, 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 takes. And after bishop d2, what's happening? So basically, white is having the bishop pair. Black is not having the bishop pair. But in the exchange, black is white is having a bad pawn structure compared to black's good pawn structure. So this would have been a very interesting game because there are like it is kind of an imbalanced position but at the place of a5 magnus rather played the move knight to f4 attacking the queen and at the first glance it looks like a good move because the knight is at the good, good square attacking the queen and also putting some pressure on the king side but here the main point problem in this position here is white can actually simply give up the bishop and definitely black is having the bishop pair and white is not having the bishop pair but white is having a very strong move in this position. You can try to pause the video and try to find the best move for white in this position. Okay, if you found the move e5, kudos to you. That's the exact plan. So I'm pretty sure that this particular idea of putting the knight to f4, like maybe the knight goes to g6 and come to f4. Like this position, this kind of idea is pretty common in chess. So whenever you are having for example, if you're playing with the white pieces in these types of structure, you should always try to consider capturing the knight and pushing up the pawn. This is a very good idea from the from either of the color. So after e5 attacking the knight, the black knight has to move. A much better move would have been to play bishop g4, which is a very interesting move. First of all, you can't really capture the knight because you lose the exchange. So h3 takes takes knight d7 and after queen f4 knight takes the basic whole point here is like for example queen e4 trying to mate knight g6 
and surprisingly the knight defended the queen so if you try to go for trading off all the material black is extremely fine having a solid position and it's an even position even with opposite color bishop so bishop g4 would have been much more accurate as magnus just needs a draw but as both the players are extremely low on time and there is no increment on the clock he played the most human move in the position knight d5 moving the knight attacking the c3 pawn so now we have h3 by alureza a much better move and a very powerful move was i want all of you guys to pause the video and try to find this astonishing powerful move that was actually missed by alureza firuja <coughs> okay so if you found the move congratulations on finding knight d6 a very aggressive move what's happening like the bishop and the rook is attacked so for example if you simply go for capturing the knight which is the first move that comes into mind now white is not really going to capture the bishop obviously because of queen e2 so white's having a strong move queen to d3 first moving the queen and not threatening simply mate on h7 so black has to play g6 and now i can capture the bishop this time you can't really go for capturing the pawn because the rook would be hanging so you have to move back with the queen and simply takes bishop b3 and now my point is to simply capture the knight and get a pawn so you have to defend it with the bishop but after rook e1 queen to d7 i can already play b5 because the whole problem here is you can't really go for capturing the d6 pawn because of c4 and you have to move the knight you lose the queen you move the queen you lose the knight and it's winning for white so that's the whole variation but if you try to move your rook in the position white can happily capture the bishop and after bishop f5 so basically the whole advantage that black was having of bishop pair is now simply removed and after bishop f5 e6 now white is the one having a better position already so <clears throat> this would have been the best but unfortunately Alreza was not really be able to find this move and he played the move h3 stopping bishop g4 and now we have g6 you can't really play knight into c3 because of queen d3 it's a checkmate and you lose the knight as well so that's the whole idea g6 a much better move would have still been rook to d8 covering the d6 square but okay g6 queen d2 and here again rook d8 would have been best covering knight to d6 but bishop e6 and now alreza knight to d6 now he is definitely not going to miss knight d6 like for eternity knight d6 you attack the rook and the pawn in the game we have rook e to d8 if you go for capturing the knight takes and you can't really capture the pawn because of c4 You can't move the knight because the queen is hanging and if you move the queen I can capture the knight and I'm a piece up. So we have rook e to d8. If you try to play rook e to b8 defending the b7 pawn already c4 and you are still having a hopeless position. Like you have to play maybe like knight b6 and still you lose the f4 pawn and everything is collapsing. Okay so we have rook e to d8 attacking the knight but now c4 first you have to move the knight and now c5 so basically the knight is extremely strong on d6 by covering by the help of the c5 and the e5 pawn so now the position is already way good for white knight to d5 and now simply bishop e4 by alreza a very strong move his idea is to simply remove the knight from this position b6 and now extremely strong move again knight d4 just not hurrying of capturing the knight first improving his other pieces knight d4 idea is to capture the c6 pawn bishop d7 and now finally capturing the knight takes queen into f4 white is already a pawn up now takes takes with a completely winning position definitely black is having the bishop pair but it's not really going to work in this particular position rook b8 and like there are many times often that you are having a better position but you are not really be able to convert such position So I would say that this position is kind of the same where black is definitely a pawn down but it's hard to convert and the way Alreza converts it is uh is just a masterclass rook b1 first he likes to trade off the giving no counter counterplay to black 
take stakes and rook b8. So Magnus' idea is to simply trade as many pieces as possible, go into the end game, and somehow survive. Take stakes, and now we have knight to f3 by El Reza. He knows that the queen on f4 is not doing much compared to if the queen would have been on the queen side. So first he plays knight f3, defending this pawn and making a queen away for the queen to go on the queen side. Bishop c7, queen b4, bishop c6, knight to c8, attacking the queen and the pawn. So queen to d7, capturing the second pawn. So now white is two pawns up. Bishop a4, because white's idea is now to simply grab one pair of the bishop and it's completely win. So bishop a4, now queen to b7, jumping in with the queen, and now the idea is to already push c6. So now d4, Magnus just relying on his single hope, which is the d pawn. c6 now, queen to d8, obviously you can't move the queen because the bishop would be hanging, so you have to protect the bishop. And now queen to b4, already a very strong move, attacking the bishop and the pawn at the same time. If you try to push the pawn, I can happily capture the bishop, and if you push, I can. I'm always having a last resort of capturing the pawn with the knight, but already queen d1 is available. But okay, bishop bishop to c2, and now extremely strong move once again, knight to b5. Many times we like to simply capture everything, but after queen d4, queen b8, and this there like white is three pawns up, but still black is having some counter play because somehow the bishop are very nicely placed and. Like the pawn on c6 is not really running anywhere. You can't push the e pawn because the f pawn is covering it. So it's already a bit hard to convert with the white pieces. Like even if you are playing Magnus, it's extremely tough. So you have to kind of have to find the best move all the time. So knight to b5. First idea is to capture the bishop. And now the pawn is also hanging. So for example, if you try to push the pawn, white can already capture the bishop. Takes and already queen d6 and the position is winning. So you can't push. So bishop to e4 and now finally one pair of minor pieces is traded. Knight into d4 and now queen into e5. You can't capture the c6 pawn because of queen c5 and do lose the bishop. So queen into e5, queen to c4 and the, basically the whole point here is the queen is protecting the pawn and the journey of the pawn is extremely simple. So now queen to g5 threatening mate in one but f3. Queen check and now simply a best move. King to h1. And after king h1, now there are no more checks. Like uh, for example, if queen e1 check, king h2 and now the checks are over up. White just needs to move to win the game. And it's completely winning for white. So that's why after king h1, Magnus decided to resign the game after 42 move. And we have the champion of the champions chess to Alireza the Firuja, beating Magnus two times in a row. So already extremely well played game by Al Reza Firuja to beat Magnus Carlsen. He already said that beating Magnus two times in a row is extremely tough and nearly impossible. But he has actually done the impossible by, by himself. So yeah, if you learned anything new from this game, make sure to like the video, share this video with everyone and make sure to subscribe to our channel if you are new to our channel. It's free for you but it helps us to motivate to make more videos like this. I'm going to come up with these exciting videos like this. So till then stay tuned and keep watching one shot chess.